Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Do we in the United States have any idea how other nations look at us, especially the European nations, including Germany? I thought it was quite remarkable when reading some articles which were published in light of September 11 as to what was being said. And I'd like to just pass some of these thoughts on to you so you realize where we stand right now as a country in the minds of other nations. These articles are taken from the magazine Der Spiegel Online, a very respected and influential paper and magazine in Germany. These articles were all published on September 11, and that is what they said. It is a history of the decline of the USA as a superpower. America was trapped in Iraq for years, where victory was a long time coming and was never a real one. It is currently trapped in Afghanistan, where victory no longer even seems possible. Today, the USA is a deeply divided country. The country is at war with itself. It has a Congress where there is perpetual conflict between the right and the left, and where they don't even want to talk to each other when the threat of a national bankruptcy looms. The USA has become estranged from the rest of the world. Now, these are deeply meaningful comments because they are in line with what the Bible is telling us is going to happen to the United States of America prior to Christ's return, which is imminent. And that is that the United States of America will find itself in a position ultimately where it is totally isolated, totally ignored and isolated and hated by other nations. Mark my words. It is going to happen, because God's word is true, and that is what the Bible tells you. Here's another article. America remains for me, this author writes, an unbelievably beautiful country, where the smartest people that one can find on God's earth live and teach. So this doesn't sound to me that this man is really antagonistic towards the United States of America, but notice how he continues. And it still holds true that this superpower saved Europe from self-destruction during the two world wars. But what became to it after 1945? After 1945, America has in truth only served to fight the wrong wars in the wrong places for the wrong reasons. There were the two McCarthy-era wars in Korea and Vietnam. In the end, the cost in blood to the Americans was horribly high. Afterwards, America became a demoralized country. Afghanistan also falls into this category of the wrong wars in the wrong places at the wrong time. It is a country that can be conquered but cannot be ruled. That's why the conquerors always withdraw eventually. When America fell into the trap, it joined a long list of countries that had made the same mistake. First, Iraq would become a democracy, so the thought was, then Syria and so on. They, the Americans, wanted to change the world and actively impose their ideology on others. It was probably the last time that America would try to fulfill its historical mission of shaping the world according to its own vision of what it should be. Notice the words, historical vision, in line with what the Bible says. That's what America should have done. However, America failed. The reason why we are living today in this blessed country is not because of our superiority, of our intellect, of our intelligence, of our how to do things, no, it is because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gave us this land, blessed us because of the unconditional obedience of Abraham. And God promised to Abraham that his descendants would obtain such blessings. And yes, the United States of America is the descendant of Abraham. But God also said that if we disobey him, 
if we continue to disobey him, he will withdraw his blessings, and he has done that. He has done it. And of course, what this article in Der Spiegel wrote is just amazing to me because the Church of God has proclaimed for decades that America has won its last war, that America would not win another war after World War II, and that is exactly what happened. We haven't won any wars since World War II, and we are not going to, because God is no longer on our side because we have turned our backs on God. And God has said, if you do that, I will turn my back on you. And that is also something which the Bible says about the modern house of Israel, which is, amongst others, the United States of America. And God says, I will punish you for your sins, for your rebellion. You read the book of Isaiah all the way through, and you read many prophecies about the modern house of Israel. And we are not talking about the Jewish state over there in Israel, because this is the house of Judah, totally different and apart. We are talking right now about the United States of America. And I'm telling you right now, America is not going to win another war. And you can check up on me, and you can check up on what the Church of God has been proclaiming for years and for decades. And I'm not making this up. This is something which we have said, and this is something which we are continuing to say. Now, here's another article by Der Spiegel Online, dated September 11, saying this. Ten years have passed since September 11, 2001. What remains etched in our minds ten years after the fact? Two images tell the entire story. One is the burning twin towers and the other of a prisoner being tortured in Abu Ghraib. Violence was fought with violence only to generate even more violence. Anyone who believed that people had learned something from the wars of the 20th century was promptly disabused of that notion at the beginning of the new millennium. In fact, we have learned nothing. We are still all too willing to exterminate each other even with our own bare hands. And we always have good reason to do so. We are always in the right. The roughly 3,000 people who died on September 11 were followed by more than 6,000 dead American soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq, countless civilian victims, five million refugees, and costs currently estimated at more than three trillion dollars. It is correct that not even the Great Flood managed to wash away all evil from the earth. In the end, God said, as it is written in the first book of Moses, I will henceforth curse the ground no more for man's cause, for the imagination of man's heart is evil even from his youth. But what Franz Kafka describes in the trial as the most horrible thing of all, namely that the lie has become the order of the world, will not prevail in the long run, this author writes. However, right now it's true what Kafka wrote. Lie and lying and deceit and deception, that is in fact the order of the world, because you see, my friends, this is not God's world. This is Satan's world. Satan is still ruling this earth. And Satan is called the destroyer. Satan is called the father of lies. And it will take Jesus Christ and his return to banish Satan, to do away with his rule, and to restore the kingdom and the government of God on this earth. And when that happens, yes, then there is not going to be any more lies. Lies will be a thing of the past. Christ will rule with righteousness and in truth and in mercy. But this is not going to happen prior to Christ's return. That, my friend, is our hope, that Christ will return soon to establish and restore God's rule on this earth. Our hope doesn't lie in human leaders who are promising us that they will make things better for us if they only would come to power. And it's not in present leaders telling us, well, give me another chance and I will make it better for you. These hopes are futile. It is interesting, too, that this author wrote that violence only breeds more violence because that's exactly what Jesus Christ said. He said to Peter, put your sword away. 
All who take the sword shall perish by the sword. A lesson mankind, the United States of America, I don't care whom we are talking about, hasn't learned. And we are trying to bring about peace with war, and it will never happen that way. Not wars fought by human beings, that is. But what about Israel, the state of Israel? We know there is a very close relationship, an alliance between the United States of America and the state of Israel, even though recently that has also suffered some setbacks. Nevertheless, it is still a very close relationship. But what is prophesied for the United States of America, the modern house of Israel, is also prophesied for the modern state of Israel in the Middle East, which is none other than the modern house of Judah. Of course, there are other Jews, you know, living around in other places of the world. I'm just concentrating right now on the state of Israel. Notice what BBC wrote on September 13. Turkish PM Erdogan has said that recognition of a Palestinian state is an obligation, not an option. He told the Arab League that before the year's end, we will see Palestine in a very different situation. Mr. Erdogan made a new attack on Israel, saying its government's mentality was a barrier to peace in the Middle East. Here's an article by the Jewish paper Haaretz, dated September 10, saying, The political crisis has become a reality well before the Palestinians declare their independent state, leaving Israel isolated in facing Iran, Turkey, and Egypt. And then it talks about a political tsunami bringing about that total isolation. Bloomberg said the same on September 13. The Middle East is plunging towards crisis. Not long ago, Israel and Turkey were strategic partners. Now, relations between these two key U.S. allies are in ruins. Today, September 16, the BBC published this article. President Abbas has said that the Palestinian Authority will apply to the United Nations for full membership for a Palestinian state. The U.S. opposes the move and said it would use its veto if they apply in front of the Security Council, that is, because there the U.S. would have a veto. Israel warned of the consequences. The country would include, notice this, the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem. Mr. Abbas has opted for a request to become a full member state, which will need Security Council approval, and is likely to bring about a U.S. veto. Such a veto, the article says, could inflame Ara Arabic opinion at a time of huge upheaval in the Middle East. In other words, they will look with great disgust and disfavor, not just towards Israel, but also to the United States. Something which the Bible has prophesied is going to happen in these end times. Let me also just mention that the PLO has said that once they have this Palestinian state, no Jew will be allowed to live there. That is what is in the minds of those who are trying to bring about this kind of a state. The state of Israel will be in total isolation the United States of America will be in total isolation. The Bible says all nations will hate them. It is not a very nice picture to paint, I realize. But God also says that this is going to happen because we are not obeying him anymore. And he says, enough is enough. We need to pray, my friends, that first of all, as many as God may call, will heed his calling and will repent, will turn away from the evil ways and will change for the better. But we also need to pray that Jesus Christ is going to come back soon to this earth to establish the kingdom of God because then the evil carnal hearts of men, these hearts of rock and of stone unbending, will be changed and become hearts of flesh. That is a time we are looking forward to. And let's pray to God that that time is going to come very soon. Thanks very much for watching. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.